Okay, let's talk about storing your polymer clay uh, when you're not using it. So for instance, I conditioned half of the fuchsia, I conditioned half of a two ounce package of white. I took a couple of slices off of this one pound package of black. Um, so then what do you do to protect these again? Well, you can go ahead and rewrap these in the plastic. Yeah, we, we, we took it out of this package and you can rewrap them in the package like that and then you just need to make sure that you stick them someplace where they won't uh, sit in the sunshine because the sunshine especially if it's coming through a windshield or a glass could actually end up starting to cure or bake the clay um, you also don't want it in a room that's going to get over um, well, I don't think a room could get 275 degrees, but um, I keep my, my studio somewhat cool. Uh, but like today, it's, it's fairly warm. I think it's 80 in here. Um, and the clay was really, really soft, which is nice sometimes when you're, you're playing with it. But there's times people will say that they work on a really intricate clay. And the more you handle it, your hands warm up the clay. Uh, just working with it, the lights warm up the clay. Um, they take that cane and go put it in the refrigerator or the, refreeze, the freezer to um, solidify it again, get those molecules to, to not move so much so that they can slice the, the cane and not have it just smush all over the place. And I'll show you some canes in another video. Anyway, so storing, um, you can store it in here. I wouldn't use saran wrap or plastic wrap because it'll leach out the plasticizers in in the clay. You get uh, you end up with a sticky mess. So what um, what a lot of us use is um, are these deli sheets. So this is plastic wrap that you know, like people will at a, a sandwich place or something will take these out and use it to um, wrap food in. And I got these at, um, gosh, it was when I was in Michigan. So it was um, Gordon Food Service, I think, GFS store has these. So I imagine Costco might have these. Any uh, food service supply store would have these. And you know, this box came with a thousand and I bought five boxes and this is still my, my original box. As you can tell, it's gotten kind of beat up and everything. Anyway, so I just take one. Just of, so I just take one of these, these wraps and I just put it over the exposed clay. You know, people do this also, like when they do a cane, um, they use these to store the canes in anyway. So this doesn't affect the plasticizers in the polymer at all. And it'll keep the dust and the, um, in my case, the dog fur off of it. And then, you know, same thing with these little things, um, these little two ounce packages. I just roll them up. Yep, see, I got some clay on there. Don't want that clay on there. I just roll them up and then, you know, I stick them in the drawer that way. Or you can use the plastic bag, okay? So that's how you store your clay that you haven't conditioned yet. And then even conditioned clay. So I've got this sheet of conditioned clay. Um, so I take one of these plastic wrappers and I'll just lay it flat and then fold it over. And I end up with stacks of these kinds of uh, sheets of clay that I can reuse um, by just, you know, pulling it apart and taking the clay. So uh, even though you've conditioned this clay like this piece, if I would let it sit for a couple of weeks, I would, when I w took it out of here, I would need to double check it to make sure that those molecules hadn't slowed down enough to become unconditioned. I might have to condition it again. Um, so a couple ways to condition is rubbing it to warm it up, run it through the pasta machine. But if you've got a blend or a pattern you can't run it through the pasta machine or you'll ruin the pattern so that you can like sit on it let your body heat warm it up um, you know something like that but these sheets are really awesome they're just invaluable for storing your clay okay